Welcome, I'm Donna Landis-Smith from the Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation Office. We are here today to celebrate the 2022 Farm Family of the Year, Tom and Rose Jackson and family. Hi, Tom. Hi. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank what you. an honor. It is. It's you, a... you have been chosen by a board of your peers from the local Ag Advisory Board as the 2022 Farm Family of the Year. It's a, I can tell you a shock. I just, I never thought about this really, so. Well, it's kind of ironic uh, that your father and your mother were recognized in 2001 yes. as the Farm Family of the Year, and now it seems very fitting that you be celebrated as well with you and your family. You've been a huge contributor to the community and to a lot of boards that you've served on. Uh, let's talk about the Jackson family. Let's talk mm. about your heritage and your mom and dad and this farm where you're located and where you live. And uh, when did your mother and father start farming? And when did they come to locate themselves on this farm? They actually moved back to this farm in 1954. They had been renting another farm previous and then bought this farm back in 1954. And uh, it's the farm where I was born. And I had the privilege of just living here, putting here all my life. So. That's fascinating. Yeah. So you were born here. I was born here on this farm, yeah. So when your mother and father were farming here and bought this place in 1954, um, did you have any siblings? Did they live there with your parents? Or? Yes. Okay. There were seven of us. I was the sixth child out of seven. Uh, so I had older family. Mm -hmm. They were, well, we were the younger two were kind of the tail enders. The other ones were kind of gone. Right. By the time we grew up into it more. Right. But uh, yeah, but there were seven of us. So all tell part me. Of it. So tell me about the operation when your mother and father were living here when they first moved here. What kind of uh, farm operations did they have? And tell me about <coughs> what they lived with at the time. Like, did they have electric? Did they have pigs, cows? What was, uh, what was their um, operation? Well, they always had cows. And like most farms, they were diversified. I mean, they'd have a few pigs. Uh, Mom always had the chickens and sold the eggs. That was her thing. She, she sold the eggs and got the grocery money. Oh, that's interesting. So that, that was her side, and she did that, and then which we always had the cows, and that was, everybody did the cows. So. Right, right. So yeah. you and all, mo pretty much all your siblings worked on the farm in some sort of capacity. Yes. Yeah. Growing up, we all did. Right. So tell me about, um, you said you lived here most of your life. So was there a time of your life that you weren't living here on the farm? Yes. I, uh, after I got married, a couple of years, we had moved. Uh, up north, I worked on another dairy farm up there. Mm -hmm. um, was the herdsman up there for Kildee Farms, uh, which gave me a chance to really work with cows right. in a breeding program. I uh, had the privilege of working with a cow, with a bubbler cow we called. She was nominated and made All-American. Really? So I got a chance to work with that and gain a lot of experience through that. Right. Uh, then I worked around a few other dairy farms and then went to a partnership and uh, after that split up, and then we came back here and started our own herd. Okay, so you were so milking your own cows. Now, did your father still have cows no, when you had, brought your herd back? No, he had already gotten rid of the cows when I brought the herd back. So. Right, yeah. right. So roughly how many cows were you milking and how many heifers and calves did you have with your operation? When we sold them, we were milking about 50. Uh, when I moved back here, I moved back with 23 cows. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was what I had out of the partnership, and uh, we, we started out with 23 cows and expanded it. To, uh, right. So tell me a little bit about um, when you were milking those 23 cows. Um, did you have any children at the time, or was it just you and your wife? Or We had the oldest two girls. Okay. They were, oh, about 10 and 12 when we moved back here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, they had their chores, but they were small. So Right. Sure. Yeah. So do they fool with the cows any? Yeah, they, they showed the calves. Oh, that's uh, good. Yeah. So they were involved in 4-H? Yes. Yeah, yes. did they just show the dairy cows or did they have other animals that they, they showed? They went through everything. We, typical farm <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did from chickens and rabbits to goats, sheep, well, horses, they, did them all. They yeah. did the whole gambit of animals yeah. at 4-H. Yeah. So yeah. they kind of grew up in 4-H. Now, did you grow up in 4-H and show no, animals? I didn't. No? I, did, I did not do 4-H. Right. So when you had the kids come along, you decided to put them in 4-H? I wanted to, yeah. As a youth, I never had the chance to do it. 
Right. I never had a way to get to the meetings, um, and I was, I hated that. So when, when we had our kids come up of age, mm -hmm. we made sure they were going to have that chance. What a great opportunity for them, oh, since yeah, you had never experienced it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so tell me about, um, you said you were off the farm, and um, now when did you stop milking cows? Did you farm the land, or did you just milk the cows, or, or what was your farm operation? When I stopped? Yes. Uh, we sold the cows, I think it was 97. Okay. And uh, then we just did grain farming after that. Right, right. And, uh, so did you work on the farm full time pretty much your entire adult life, or did you do anything else? Did you have any other off, off the farm? I went through different stages there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was full time, then I've also worked uh, well, I went back to work. For, I worked 84 lumber for a while. I worked at Lowe's. I worked at Wright Cold Chemical for 12 years. Uh, and through all of that, I was farming on the side. Oh, okay. All right. Now, was so, your father still farming with you? Or were you pretty much taking over the farm operation at that point? He, w he would help. He was part of the operation. Right. But, I mean, as he got older, he did less and less. But, right. You know, right. But, yeah, he was part of it. Now, tell me about um, when you were here full time. Um, now, did your girls stay here on the farm till they were adults or yes um, yes um, they were here till they graduated uh, about the time they got graduated I went to a divorce okay and then I remarried and that's where Rosie come in and two more kids came back oh, okay <laughs> so tell us about Rosie so that's uh, your yeah, that's your wife yeah and um, did Rose grow up on a farm did she have any farm background or what's what she Rose's was always story? around the farm uh, her father had done some caretaking work and uh, the family had a farm over still pond and uh, mm -hmm. so she grew up around that but it was kind of odd that I guess she had told them <coughs> once she left the farm she was never gonna be tied to another cow's tail so. <laughs> <laughs> and then she met you and she and met me and she swallowed the words and came back <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you and Rose date before you decided to get married we met on June 9th and we were married December 31st oh you were quick well we said we were gonna take our time but it went quick <laughs> oh okay all right so after you got married now did you still have cows when you got married or you got rid we, of them? we had some beef cows I okay. was not milking the cows right yeah so now you said you had a couple <laughs> more children so yeah. who came along next Julia came first okay and All right. then two years later, we had Andrew. Okay, so you've got three girls and one boy. Now, right. does Rose have any other children? Rose has a son from previous marriage. Okay. Yes. Oh, so. my gosh. You've got three girls and two boys. Yes. So you pretty much had, like, the Partridge family. You combined and expanded. Yeah. Except, well, it kind of wasn't, wasn't, because my two, had, I, they had left by the time I met Rosie and married her. Right. So, but we are one family yeah, combined, but, yeah. That's good. So it took a little bit of uh, Oh, there's adjusting to it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yep. tell me about Julia and Andrew and uh, Rose's son, George. Now, were they involved with 4-H or? Uh, George was not. He was not really a, a farm person. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the two, Julia and, and Andrew, both have done most everything in 4-H. Mm -hmm. uh, they've showed all kinds of the hogs, the sheep, the goats. Um, and they've done well. I mean, it's been a right. 4-H is a great thing for them. Right, and it's really expanded. You know, their knowledge oh, of animals has. and community service and community and service. Being responsible. Speaking, dealing with the public, dealing with issues. Right. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Now, what did George do? Since he kind of wasn't a farm guy, what did he end up doing with his life? Well, he was in the service. Good for him. And he served eight years there. That's awesome. And now he's working some with the veterans, but he has some PTSD, and it's he he's paid a price. Yes, he's doing the best that he can. Yes. Well, and we admire him for giving eight years to yeah. Yeah. to um, to all of us. Yeah. You know, and we thank him for that. So that's very yeah. important to recognize. You know that there are things that happen. But we also appreciate very much what we, he did. We need to help those people. Yes, yeah. definitely. So tell me about um, some of the things that you've done in your adult life other than farm. Um, I know that you've served on several committees, boards. Tell us about the community service that you've done. 
<laughs> Where do you begin, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, with the cows, when I was back in milking the cows, uh -huh. we was on the DHIA board, the tell whole us what a, pub. Tell us what the DH, DHIA board is. Dairy Herd Improvement Association. Okay. That's the testing your milk and then through testing and weighing your milk, you know how efficient you are trying to improve the cows right. and, and breeding cows. And, uh, That's very interesting. So, so what was the next board that you served on? I was on the Holstein board. Uh, then I guess I went on the Farm Bureau board next probably. Uh, served several terms there. Um, went off. Came back on again. <laughs> went off. <laughs> came back on again. Then I went up serving as president for five years there. Good for you. And uh, then I'm in there, I got on the planning commission, served a term there. Um, try to do things to help the community. Um, now I've, I've joined the Roar Tank Club now. Good for you. Trying to help things out. So, so you definitely have given back. Try to. Right. And I know that you served on the 4-H board, or the park board, excuse park me. Yes, yes, board I did serve as well. on the park board, yeah. And tell us about that. Tell people what that involves. You know, people come to the fair and they think it just automatically happens. Tell us about how much you do when you're on either the 4-H park board or the 4-H board itself. The park board, I mean, the park, it, it's nonstop. I mean, things go on there. You, it's not just that week of the fair. It, it's That's the main thing, but, I mean, it, it's got to be maintained year round right make the improvements right um, try to have as many activities as you can to, to support the park uh -huh. it's a asset we have that we need to uh to use right so i mean it's planning there and then it involved a lot of things from making ta picnic tables to fixing barns fences you name it, it yeah. it's there and there was a couple of tornadoes that came through that took down big trees. They yes, had to be cleaned yes. up. We, we love the shade of Queen Anne's County, but those trees are... <laughs> <laughs> a burden at times. <laughs> They're a liability. <laughs> right. So basically, you work 12 months a year to get to that week in yes, August. Yes, you have to maintain that park year-round. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're not out there every day, but... Uh, and you have meetings every month. Yes, they do serve a meeting every month. and. That's the joke when you go on the board. It's only one one day a month, yeah. But uh, you do a lot but more. But it's nonstop. You do a lot you more. You know, moving tractors, moving bleachers. It's there's a lot of projects coming yeah. in there to, to make it happen to make to make it nice for everybody. Right, right. So tell us about the farming operation now. Do you still farm the land or? No, actually now I've rented out. Mm -hmm. I have a young couple that's rented it. Um, Great. I got to a point in my life where the farm wasn't big enough to justify investment in equipment to what I needed to do. Right. I wasn't quite ready to quit, but a young man approached me about <coughs> renting it, and uh, I thought it was a good chance to help him and, and help me too. So it's worked out well. That's a good thing. Yeah. And you get to the point where the next generation needs to start. Yes. Just like you took the generation away from your dad and yes. transitioned over to you and now it's time for the next generation to come along and, and we have try. to help, we have to help these young guys get started I yes mean, it was bad enough when i was trying to start but what these guys are facing today um they've got to have some people help them right so let's let's talk about that when you started um what do you think your biggest challenge was when you decided okay i'm going to take over the farm and operation from my parents and try to get going on my own. What was the biggest challenge or what was the hardest thing for you to start out? Trying to get that farm. Trying to get your dad to commit to that. Right. He wasn't really turning things over. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's hard and... Uh, the old timers don't want to give up. No. And it, it's a struggle and I don't want to... I mean, I'm grateful for what I have but that's a struggle every young man probably goes through that on the farm. Right. Um, and I know it's good intentions, but most of them will say, when I'm gone, you can have it or whatever. But if they're not willing to put something in writing, go with your own life. Right. Right. It's tough. Because things change and, and it's, I've seen too much of it. Yeah. 
tell us about um, your challenges when you were farming uh, with weather, prices, contracting grain. Um, you know, a lot of people think you just get on a tractor and drive and plant, but there's so much more behind the scenes that's not actually farming. Yeah. Not actually like working in the ground. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges that you endured. Well, there was an old farmer years ago who said it's not time what you produce, it's how you market what you produce. And there's a lot of truth to that. Right. Uh, I was lucky when I started, basically, corn prices didn't change a quarter all year long. Right. Today they change a quarter a day every day. It's, it's, yeah. it's much more of a gamble. Yes. The weather has always been the, the problem. Yeah. You know, we can't control it. Irrigation or not, you still we're at the mercy. Yeah. Well, a and fine example is today. It's 95 degrees and it's been in the 90s for the last couple of weeks. And we haven't had rain in a couple of weeks, so no. it's it's the crops are in distress. Our, our corn's been looking good, but today it's it's hurting. Yeah. 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 And there's nothing you can do about no. it. No. It's a little discouraging when you put all the time and the money it's and the effort. It's very discouraging when you're sitting there and and you're knowing, seeing it burn knowing, up. Knowing what you've got invested in, though, right? it's, it's burning. <laughs> right, right. So tell us about um, Rose's, um, she's not here today, and no. it's for a very good reason. Tell us what Rose does. Rose works with the hospital for the diagnostic image and does the x-ray stuff. Right. Uh, so she likes the medical part. and. Uh, so she's a healthcare provider. Yes. And she works very long days. She works four 10-hour days now, so yeah. Right. Uh, and it's a very trying time for her. Uh, and I'm sure it's been um, a very trying couple of years with COVID and having patients come in and out. And it, it has been dealing with the COVID and the mask and everything. And this, and COVID has changed people. It, it, she comes home sometimes biting nails because people have a different attitude with the COVID. Right. It, it's. We don't respect each other as much and part of our society, but uh, right. we, we need to stop and look at ourselves and, and think, you know, what am I doing? Yes. Yeah. So. And um, I know from speaking to Rose, um, you had a very difficult time with COVID yourself. You had a yes, very, I did. very bad experience. Yes. And um, if you could tell anybody anything from that experience that you had, what would you tell people? Even though it's been kind of we've kind of let things our guard down and things have you know transitioned over with COVID what would you tell people about your experience well COVID was bad there's no denying that I spent 12 days in the hospital but right the first two days in there I wasn't sure if I was going to live that's the thing is the people around you the people you love right say what you got to say to them make it up um laying there that night i need to settle this person that or i need to tell that person that right with covid you couldn't see anybody and i'm like i may not get a chance to see any of them again right so it's do a it, real do big it, reality check do it today right it's yes. so important yes so important because tomorrow may not be here it's not promised that's correct so yeah. tell us about your family what has been some of the most joyous things you've had with the kids, um, Rose's son, and your combined family? What has been some of the most joyful things for you? Actually, one of the most joyful things for us is we play a lot of games. And when they're all together, you can just card right. games and stuff. And they're all comedians, you know, they want to... <laughs> <laughs> but but it's great just to see everybody get along and, and simple things. I mean, just time together. Right. Come together and uh, right. Family and time enjoy. is very important. Yes. 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 So tell me about your two oldest daughters. What do they do? My oldest daughter drives a truck. And what is your oldest daughter's name? Melinda. Melinda. Okay. Yeah, she drives a truck. And second daughter, Manda, she works with the kitchen and school systems in Kent County. Great. So. I understand you have a granddaughter. Yes, we do. Yeah, and what is your granddaughter's name? Briley. Briley. And, and how old is Briley? She is 10, I think. <laughs> okay, and yeah. I'm sure she's great joy in your family. Yeah. 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 So who's she's next? Would it be George? 
Yeah, George would be the next date. Right. Yeah. And he's working with the vets, so that's yeah. great. And then Julia is next in line. And yeah. what is Julia doing? Julia is attending Purdue University. Good for her. Going back for her junior year. Great. So. And Julia has some pretty exciting news. Yes. Julia's getting, well, she'll be graduating in two years, and then that fall, she's getting married. Good for her. And so. what is her fiancé's name? Benton. Benton? Yeah. Yep, so oh. you, you've got a big plan coming up here in a couple of years. Big wedding. Yeah, yeah. And last but not least, your youngest. Andrew. Andrew. And Andrew is a comedian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've known Andrew since he was born, and Andrew is a very, very special young man, and he's got something exciting coming up next year also. And what is yeah. that? That would be his graduation. Yep, and gr Andrew has worked extremely, extremely hard for his graduation. Yes, yes. And I know you all will be celebrating big time him getting to that um, that milestone in his life. Andrew's been a joy to us. It's we we are known as Andrew's mom and dad. We're not <laughs> right. <laughs> we're, we go to the fair, whatever. <coughs> it's quite often you'll hear that's Andrew's mom or dad. Right. Everybody knows Andrew. Everybody knows Andrew, and everybody loves Andrew. Yes. Andrew yes. is, li Andrew, like I said, he's a very special young man. He's taught me a lot about life. I had children previous, and then Julia, but Andrew has taught me a lot about life. Special needs do that. Tell us about that. What has Andrew, how has Andrew done that for you and Ruth? <clears throat> he sees the simple things that we overlook. Right. I'll tell you a little story that when he was going to preschool, we had tulips planted out front here, and the bus was, I was taking him out to go to the bus, and walked out there, and he squatted down to just stroke the tulip. And I grabbed him, like, come on, boy, we gotta go. And then it kind of hit me, you know? We never stopped to look at what we've done. Right. Rosie and I spent more time in the store looking at these tulips to get them to come in color at different times. Right. Than we ever did stopping to look at them. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And just those simple things that he notices and, and does. Right. It makes life so special. It's meaningless without it. Right. We just go through life and miss all of that. So you, we kind of take it for granted. We look at life through rose-colored glasses, but he has very clear vision. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's, well put. Yeah. yeah. It's, And I've seen that in him when the first time he showed in 4-H and he won and yeah. the joy on his face was oh, incredible. Yeah. yeah. And he appreciates any ribbon. Yes. But to win a, a you know, a category or something at the 4-H fair was just the yeah, epitome to see him of actually joy. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's wonderful. Yeah. And we all need to be like that. Yes. So tell me, um, what is your and Rose's greatest accomplishment? Our kids. Well said. Well said. Our kids. That's an amazing thing to be able to say about your family. Yeah. That's great. So, all right, now I'm going to pick your brain a little bit. Mm. Tell us something about yourself that people would be like, holy cow, I did not know that about Tom Jackson. Is there something really kind of unique and different that maybe no, I'm not unique at all I'm just me I don't know um, I don't think of a side of me that people don't see I don't mm -hmm. you know I don't know what would be yeah so you're just kind of plain Jane that's me <laughs> <laughs> but you're not plain Jane because you're the 2022 farm family that's going to be recognized I I as am, a fair. Yes. so that makes you special yeah 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 you and your entire family yeah. So I think that's a time for us to say congratulations again, Tom. This is a recognition that's so deserved by you. You have given so much of your time and years of service to the community, to the county, to the 4-H kids, to the fair. I mean, it's and the behind the scenes. I know what you did as the president of Farm Bureau and you went to Annapolis and you petitioned, you know, bills and testified. You know, it's a lot of time spent for agriculture yes well, and you just you agriculture is very special to me i mean that's i, I i'm thankful i grew up into agriculture to, to learn the values that i did right that's uh to me the greatest thing it, it, being on a farm teaches their kids so much about life right right that's there was something that you said that i've heard you say prior to 
your statement was farming is a great way it's a poor way to make a living but a great way to raise a family exactly yeah. exactly a poor way to make a living but a great way to, to raise, raise a, a family, family. Yeah. and obviously your fruits of your labor have worked it's yeah. a success yeah. congratulations